Uh, we're going to go into Romans chapter 5, and uh, starting at verse 12, go through to the end of the chapter in verse 21. And uh, in, in this passage, many people uh, uh, teach that um, Adam forced physical death upon all mankind, and that uh, Adam, by one man, um, we were all forced and made to be sinners. So we were all born that way. So I would like to look at this whole passage. This will be a little uh, longer video than I normally do, just because it is a, a deep and complex chapter. And there's uh, really important points we need to recognize in order to, to come to the right conclusion on what uh, the Apostle Paul is saying here in this chapter. So we're going to go through it slowly, and then we're going to look at the implications of what this chapter means if we believe that it teaches inherited sin, that we had no choice in being born sinners, that we, we, we inherited a sinful nature from Adam when he sinned. It was, it was as if we sinned, so therefore we are born with that sinful nature, and because of that sinful nature, we're going to physically die. We're going to see what implications that has on our understanding of sin and also of uh, uh, righteousness um, through Jesus Christ. So starting in verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man, we know this is referring to Adam, by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. So right there, sin entered into the world. It doesn't say that sin entered into man. Sin entered into the world by one man, Adam. And death came by sin. And so, right now, we could initially think that this is referring to physical death. Because, oh, well, death came by sin. Without Adam's sin, there would there would be no physical death. And that's true because his sin forced us out of the, out of the Garden of Eden where the tree of life was. And that's what would have given us eternal physical life. But the, the next part of this passage reveals to us what death is being referred to. It says, and so death passed upon all men. Now, it doesn't say because they were born that way, but it says for or because all have sinned. So the reason this death passed upon all men was because all have sinned. It's not because they were born sinful. It's not because it was forced upon them, but it, it passed upon all men because all had sinned. Now, going back to the previous videos in this series, is extremely important to remember the different types of death. Physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. And also recognizing um, when Adam and Eve sinned, the very day that they, um, they sinned and they partook over the forbidden fruit, they died um, not physically, even though God said the day you eat of it, you're, you'll surely die, but they died spiritually. That's when their sin separated them from God. They recognized they were naked. They lost their innocence. They lost that good and upright uh, nature that they were created with. And now here they find themselves with a sinful nature. And so when we understand that, when God kicked them out of the garden so they wouldn't eat from the tree of life and give them eternal physical life in that, that sinful state that, was, um, that had separated them from God, they couldn't have that right relationship with God. This could, reveals to us that the, the tree of life was only for physical sustenance. It wasn't for spiritual life. Because if it would, would have brought back a right relationship with them and God, God would have said, have at it. You know, eat and, and, and come back into spiritual life. But spiritual life could only come through um, the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So this is the, what Adam did forced physical death upon all mankind, not because of um, we're, we're all born with a sinful nature, but because he, as a consequence of, of his sin, he, um, him and all his posterity got removed from the Garden of Eden where they could have freely eaten from the Tree of Life and live forever physically in their good and upright state in which they were created. So with that understanding, the reason this death passed upon all men was because all have sinned, implying that this is not referring, 
This chapter is not referring to um, physical death. It's referring to spiritual death. And then verse 13 continues that thought. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Now this is important. In this passage, it teaches us so much if we will just stop and think about it. If you believe in inherited sin, stop and think about um, how against inherited sin this passage is. So it says, until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. But even though, even, even though that was the case, that's why it says nevertheless, death still reigned from Adam to Moses. Now this death is not talking about physical death. The context is referring to the spiritual death above. So spiritual death still reigned from Adam to Moses. People still died, became dead in their trespasses and sins. And so how, the question is, how did they become dead in their trespasses and sins if there was, was apparently no law? Now, uh, we know that uh, from Moses on, there was a law written on stone. So now they had a written law. We know that Adam and Eve were given a, a direct command from God, do not do this, do this. And they disobeyed. So um, how did the people from Adam to Moses who had no law written on stone or weren't given a direct command from God, how did they die then if there was no law? Well, when we, we turn to Romans chapter 2, and we've already gone into this in the video um, on Ephesians chapter 2, the first three verses, but in this we can learn about um, those who do not have the law written on stone or a uh, direct command from God, when Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans says, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. And now he's going to expand upon what law they actually did have. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. And that's a powerful passage when you compare it with uh, Romans 5, thir verses 13 and 14, because you can now learn that uh, from Adam to Moses, even though they didn't have a direct command from God or uh, a law written on stone, they had the law of their conscience that they were created with, they were born with. They had the law of reason. So they still sinned, just like anyone else sinned, just like Adam and Eve sinned, and just like the, the, everyone after Moses sinned against the, the, the law written on stone. All are, are, are without excuse before God. We're all born with a good and upright nature. We all have a conscience when we're born, and the law written in our hearts. And when we go against what we know to do and choose, choose the evil and sin, that is when we become dead in our trespasses and sins. That is when we um, spiritually die. And so in light of that understanding, so until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So this, is, this brings out even more truth, that from Adam to Moses, they, uh, the Apostle Paul didn't liken Adam's sin as their sin. So this teaches the exact opposite of inherited sin or original sin, that all mankind sinned in the loins of Adam and became guilty that day and was as if they did exactly what Adam did. This goes against it because they said from Adam to Moses, they still died spiritually um, and uh, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression or in the same way Adam transgressed. Adam sinned against a direct command from God, whereas these people from Adam to Moses, they sinned against the law of their conscience, the, the law of reason. And then it says uh, regarding, um, it says, who is the figure of him that was to come? Um, this is referring to Jesus. 
but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, this is referring to Adam, many be dead. You know, keeping in mind we're talking about spiritual death. So because of one man's uh, offense, because of one man's sin, uh, forcing mankind into a sinful world, we're all born in a sinful world now, whereas in the Garden of Eden, we wouldn't have been born into a sinful world. Um, so through the, the, the offense of one, many be dead. So what he did leads to many following in his footsteps, so to speak. It's not saying that he caused or forced peop, uh, people to, to, to spiritually die to sin and thus um, uh, die spiritually. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So here this is um, bringing about the, the distinction between Adam and Jesus Christ. One brought condemnation. The other brought uh, righteousness and eternal life. And being recognizing that the death is referring to spiritual death and the life is, return, uh, is referring to spiritual life, that's why I can say we um, uh, receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life by Jesus Christ. So this isn't referring to an, etern an eternal state in heaven. This is referring, referring to, to here and now when we're, we are born again, when, when um, we um, receive uh, the gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ. So, uh, verses 18 and 19 are common passages used to teach that in Adam, uh, all men since were, were born sinners in Adam, and that what Adam did forced sin into mankind, basically, it forced us to be born sinners. But in to be honest with this passage, we need to recognize that both verses 18 and 19 teach the same thing uh, with regards to Adam and with regards to Jesus. So if we're going to read these verses and say that Adam forced uh, spiritual death and condemnation upon all mankind, then we have to read it because it's the same words that say Jesus Christ uh, brought... Um, uh, righteousness and the free gift come, comes upon, upon all to justification of life. So we got a problem if we believe in an inherited sin being forced upon us with no choice in the matter. Then we also um, must believe that uh, we receive uh, uh, salvation um, that's forced upon all mankind with no choice to obey or not obey the gospel. So this is, I'll read verses 18 and 19, and then, and then we'll break it down even more. It says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, that by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So, there you have it. That This is what uh, universalists use to teach their doctrine of universal, universalism. This idea that in the end, every single person is going to be saved. That no one is going to be condemned to hell for all eternity. And by teaching, by teaching that uh, inherited sin is true and that Adam forced... Um, through Adam's disobedience, that, that made or forced us to be sinners when we were born, um, leads to that universe, that belief in universalism. However, in all what all these videos have have presented is that if we got a, if we have the right understanding, instead of looking at uh, us being born sinners, we're actually uh, born and created good and upright, just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And that when we sin, and looking back to Romans 5, verse 12, it 
spiritual death passed upon all men, or death passed upon all men, because all have sinned. So this is when we sin, um, we, we, we die spiritually, we become dead in trespasses and sins. We're now slaves to sin. We have a sinful nature that, that causes us to sin. And um, we're now in bondage to the law of sin and death. Whereas we, we, we learned in, in, in the Romans chapter 7 video that uh, Jesus frees us from the bondage of sin and death. When we obey the gospel, we put on the new man, Jesus Christ. So um, this is what it's getting at. It's, it's talking about the occasion that both Adam and Jesus Christ brought to mankind. It's not talking about forcing anything upon anyone. What Adam did, his act of sinning, made us all uh, have to be born in a sinful world, surrounded by sin. And it, it, it forced physical death upon us as well. So the reason we physically die is because Adam t um, took away our access to the tree of life because of his sin. But spiritual death comes upon all men because they sin. So they transgress the law, whether it be the law written on stone or the law of their conscience, the law of reason. Um, irregardless of how they sin, when they sin, they come short of the glory of God. They're spiritually dead at that point. So in, with this understanding that Adam's uh, offense, his sin is the occasion um, by which judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteous, righteousness of one, Jesus Christ, um, he brought about the occasion or the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So this is, you can't say that Adam's sin uh, forces um, everyone to be made sinners in, in that sense of the term, because the same made righteous is referring to Jesus. And we know that not everyone is, is going to be forced to be made righteous. We all have, a, there's a choice involved. What it's saying is the tendency of what Adam did, that that tendency leads towards um, people following in his footsteps, sinning, and thus um, being separated from God. What Jesus Christ came to do was to bring us back into a right relationship with God, knowing that all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, um, what he did is the way back to God. So it doesn't, it doesn't force us, what Jesus did it doesn't force us, to um, be saved, but it provides us the opportunity to receive what Jesus Christ did on the cross to earn our salvation. No, and in no way is that teaching a, a works-based salvation. Only Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross could earn our way back to God, could earn our salvation. I'm not saying that we can do anything to earn our salvation. Jesus Christ alone earned our salvation. However, God has established a way in which we um, obey the gospel, and a way in which we apply and receive the cl completed work that Jesus earned for us through um, repenting of our sins after f uh, confession, confessing our faith in Jesus Christ, um, being baptized uh, in water by full immersion in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, and by being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how we are born again. That's how we um, take part in... Um, it says, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's how we, uh, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, the gift of eternal life, came upon all men unto ju justification of life. But you can't take choice out of the matter, out of this equation. Just like we're not forced to um, sin like Adam did. We're given a choice, just like he did. We come to an age where we know to refuse the evil and choose the good. And the choice that we make determines our demise and that's when we, uh, our own individual sins have separated us from God. So I'd like to just encourage you to read this, this chapter in a different light. If you're used to seeing it all as teaching a inherited sin, um, what I've just presented, especially with, reg with regards to verses 13 and 14, who from Adam to Moses, they didn't sin after the similitude of Adam, which is hard to, if you believe that, all men sinned in Adam's loins. It's hard to uh, 
reconcile that verse with that thought. And I'll finish the chapter by reading verses 20 and 21. It says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto an eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's comparing what Adam did with what Jesus Christ did, and what Jesus did superseded and is more powerful than what Adam did, the sin that Adam brought into the world. Um, that's what it, what it, what it's revealing to us. So, uh, I think I think that's that's covered the most important points in the chapter. It may be something you need to um, uh, listen to again to to uh, have it really sink in and make sense. Um, but yeah, just uh, to study this chapter in, in more depth, and then also going into Romans six, seven, and eight to see that it's referring to. Um, a spiritual, a spiritual life, spiritual death. It's referring to the whole born again ex experience and how we can be freed from the bondage of, of um, sin and death. And uh, yeah, just the, the, that we don't we in Romans eight. Um, uh, let's see, eight and nine. He tells them the Christians, born again Christians, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so this help this needs to uh, help us to see flesh in a different light. That that Paul wasn't always talking in a literal, physical sense, but there's there's a lot of spiritual understanding to be understood through these chapters. And I think by applying so much physicality to it, it 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 it, it focuses on a, on a carnal understanding that is actually not true, and we miss out on the the deep spiritual understanding. Of, of these these chapters so uh, Romans chapter 5 is from verse 12 to the end is referring to spiritual death and spiritual life not physical death and physical life we know that is appointed on a man once to die physical death be comes because of what Adam did by taking away our access to the tree of life and um, and then uh, I'm gonna get go into a video of how even Jesus um, placed himself in a position by being born of a woman and taking on the same flesh as, as us, he placed himself in the position to experience physical death, even without sin. And this reveals to us that sin is not the cause of physical death. Like, our individual sins isn't what brings or causes us to physically die. What Adam did by taking away our access to the tree of life that is what has forced us to be in this world where we're going to physically die. But our own sins cause us to spiritually die. And, but we have to recognize that the Bible tells us that God's made man upright. So we're, we're created with a good and upright nature. And when we sin, we go against that good and upright nature that we're created with, and we become dead in trespasses and sins with a sinful nature now that was all a voluntary nature that we chose. And... Um, and that is what separates us from God and where we need to be born again and take part in the, di not the divine nature, Jesus Christ, through faith, which comes through obeying the gospel. So I'll end this here, and I hope it uh, has helped you to see this chapter in a, a much clearer light um, with regards to uh, the entire Word of God and what we've already discussed so far about uh, being born alive, spiritually alive, and innocent, and in a, with a good and upright nature and how we corrupt that nature when we sin and come short of the glory of God and now have a sinful nature that needs to be dealt with through uh, what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross and obeying the gospel. All right, uh, God bless, and I'll see you in my next video.